Over the last year or so, I have been on a quest to find an alternative to the Festool Domino. I love using this, but as a lot of you know, it's a polarizing tool for a bunch of reasons. I have made videos on the eBay Tiny Jig, the Beadlock Joinery System, the Jessam Pocket Mill Pro, the PowerTech Dowling Jig, and I even have a video on making your own dowling jig. Some of them are great, some of them are not so great. They all have their limitations and not all of them can do what the Domino does. Cue in the Dow Max. They did send this to me. I am not being paid and they will not see this video before it's published. I will be 100% honest and I've been very hard on these jig companies in the past, so I hope that you'll trust me. It can do everything the Domino can, plus more. A lot cheaper. They claim that it is stronger than a domino, stronger than pocket holes, stronger than biscuits, and stronger than a routed mortise and tenon. If all of those claims are true, at a fraction of the price, I think I may have found an alternative for my viewers. Will I choose this over my Festool Domino? We'll answer that at the end of the video when I put this to use in a real world application. But first, I wanna show you all the different joinery applications that this thing can do. This is not going to be a how-to. There are other amazing videos that give you step-by-step -step on how to use this. This is going to be an overview to see if this is right for you. We're gonna start off super basic here. So our first joint is joining these two boards like this. So the instructions tell me to mark this face, this face, this end and this end. The cool thing about this jig is there are clamps built into it unlike some others. The check marks that we wrote on our boards should get lined up with the check marks on the jig. So that face check mark gets aligned with that face check mark and then that check mark gets aligned with that and I can clamp that down with the built-in knurled knobs. And I'm learning it might be easier for me to put that in the vise first, then set this on top. And then I can use my fingers to line up those two edges and then clamp that down. It comes with a drill bit and a stop collar and then we can drill three holes. You can take that off. There's the first board, then the other board can go in my vise. Check mark to check mark. That can get clamped on right there. I line up the edge with my finger, and then we drill three holes, so I'm gonna drill three more. And then we can remove the jig. They sent me some dowels, so I can put a dowel there, one in there and one in there. So we used a 3 8 inch drill bit. From what I understand, these dowels, are they're, they're, they're 3 8 inch dowels, but they're actually bigger than that and they've been compressed down to this size. So when you add glue, that moisture expands it. So it'll get even tighter. So they easily go into the joint, but dude, that's, feel, 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 feel that, Daniel. I want Daniel to, to feel how accurate that is. Oh wow, it's perfect. That, yeah. So that was super easy. That is a very basic joint. You can see that easily pops on there. Those are going to expand when you get some glue because of that moisture. So that is pretty cool. For the next one, let's say I have two long boards and I wanna join them like this. I need to figure out a way to accurately put dowels all along this board. Check this out. Again, this is my first time doing this. So if it goes wrong, I'm gonna show that on camera. The instructions tell me to check mark the face, check mark the face, check mark one end, and then put X's on the side that is going to get the dowels. So again, we're gonna throw this in the jig. Check mark to check mark. Line that up with the edge with my finger, and then clamp that down. And then for this one, I'm gonna drill the first hole and then the last hole, and I'm gonna show you how we can continue drilling holes down the line. So I can take this, using an indexing pin, I can line that up with the first hole, clamp that down, and continue. Thank you. 
line it up with the hole. Yeah, and then continue. What if I want the holes further apart? They have this thing, the distancing gauge. I can loosen this and then I can put this anywhere on the bar that I want. I can stick this in the last hole that I drilled, butt up the jig up against the distancing gauge and tighten that down. And if my board was longer, I could do the same thing. So now we're just gonna repeat everything that we did on the other board. So one, two, three, four, five, six, check mark to check mark. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. That's incredible how they all line up. All right, next joint. So next we're gonna do a T joint, which is a little different since we're not lining up with the edge. If I know that I want my board right there, I'm gonna draw a line on this piece. So I got check mark, check mark, check mark, and check mark, draw an X, where the holes need to be drilled. So check mark to check mark, check mark to check mark. You're gonna get tired of hearing me say that, but that's just how this works. And then this check mark, I'm gonna line up right with that line that we drew on the board. And look at that right on the line, good solid joint. The two pieces don't have to be the exact same thickness. The clamp unscrews and can accommodate thicker boards. Now, if you just use the same technique, those pieces are going to be flush just like the other pieces. What if you don't want them to be flush? You want a little offset. And I'll show an example of when you would want an offset. This is the infamous hot dog shaker table. And here we have an offset of about a quarter of an inch. I got a video on the shaker dog table. So for this example, I'm gonna have this offset by a quarter of an inch. So I'm gonna check my face here, check my face here, here and here. And then I know I'm gonna be drilling in here and then drilling in here. For the smaller piece, business as usual, gonna line up all my check marks. The jig comes with these different spacers here, and I'm gonna choose the quarter inch spacer, which will fit in here, so I just unscrew this, pull this back, and then drop this in. Tighten that back down. So again, I line up all of my check marks. Drop in our dowels. Align our check marks. Perfectly flush on top and a perfect quarter of an inch offset on the side there. A sixteenth of an inch spacer, eighth of an inch spacer, quarter inch, three quarter, and then what is this? Uh, inch and five eighths. You can combine these to get pretty much any size that you want. You could also throw some washers in there to come up with a custom spacer for yourself as well. Next up is a mitered corner, such as a picture frame. So again, we're gonna mark our face, face, edge, edge, and then don't have to mark this because we know, but that's where we're gonna drill. Got that mounted in our vise. Got that check mark to that check mark, this check mark to the check mark there. You gotta make sure that you're not drilling out too far or the drill bit goes through the wood.
probably could have gone four. That's overkill for a picture frame. So we're gonna add our dowels. I think three is overkill for a picture frame. And then there we go. Look at that. A perfect miter. You can do a double row using the spacers. I'm not gonna demonstrate that yet because we're gonna do that at the end of the video with the actual real world project. So the next one is a butt joint like this. So again, I'm gonna mark where my holes are going to be drilled. The first piece goes into the vise and drilled as usual. The second piece needs a modification to the jig. To drill into the face of the board, we need to remove this part of the jig. And so then this gets flipped this way and those go back in. So then the clamp is going to go on the piece like this and clamp this down and then we can throw this into the vise. Oh, I forgot something. I forgot something. I need to reset the collar on my drill bit. Otherwise I will drill through the, whole, the piece, like I almost did. While I'm doing this, I'm actually gonna show you something really cool about these drill bits. The drill bit has two flat spots ground into it, so you get a nice positive place to screw in the stop collar. And the stop collars have two of the Allen key threaded inserts, so you get a nice tight hug on the drill bit. I have seen some other people where they have multiple three eighths inch drill bits and they have the, so they have a collar set on one and then a collar set on another so they don't have to move this ever. Those are, those are very privileged people. <laughs> I can almost guarantee you I'm gonna be one of those privileged people myself. Add our dowels and then Ah, so I did not drill deep enough into the mating piece. That's, I either have to chop down the dowels or drill in a little deeper. That is why those privileged people have multiple drill bits set up for this. Just something to keep in mind, but still fairly easy and perfectly lined up. All right, we got the next two require an accessory which kind of stinks that you gotta buy these add-ons, but they're pretty cool, check this out. Ignore all the holes from the previous joints, now we're gonna create a miter joint like this. So let's pretend we're making a box, and you need this optional accessory right here. We're gonna take apart our dowel max, and all we really need is this middle section with the drill guides. We got our middle section out, and then we're just going to screw it to this accessory piece here. This will go on just like this. And then if I wanna clamp this down, I can do so. And then we will do the same thing with the other piece. Don't forget to tighten the bit into the drill. For this, I had to cut down the dowels because that would have been way too long, but they go in there just like that, and that goes together perfectly. This is the last example before we get to our real world project is a, I don't know what you call this, a butt T joint like this. I'm gonna draw a line on here. This is gonna go on there like that. So we'll make a check here, we'll make a check here, we'll make a check here, make a check here. We know we wanna drill in there, drill in there. On our first piece, again, business as usual. Ah, got, forgot, forgot to set my drill bit back to the original. Those privileged people, they're lucky people. This is one of those things totally not necessary, but makes life easier. Of course, you could make your own or you could just use typical measuring tools, but you can set the depth here. It's got some indentations in there, so I'm setting mine to three quarters of an inch thick. I can set my bit in there and it kisses that and I can lock it down. 
to drill into here. All I need is the center section of the jig. So I'm gonna take this apart. I could see why some people have multiple dowel maxes laying around. Doesn't take long, but this is not a joint that I do very often. This is one of those things that I have trouble doing with my Festool Domino because I have to line this up with that line and then hold on for dear life while I turn this on and then plunge down, hoping this doesn't move. Other companies make an accessory that attaches to this. Not sure why the Domino doesn't come with that attachment, but that is exactly what this piece is for. Again, it's an optional accessory for this. Got the clamp to the board. I'm not even gonna throw this in the vise. Throw my dowels in there. Pretend like we put some glue on there. And there we go. Now there are other applications, but that's gonna be the most common. Now, I need to make a tool stand for the other shop and I'm gonna just do it out of two by fours and dowel joinery. This should go together in minutes if everything goes as planned. Check this out. Four legs and then eight stretchers, four down here and then there's going to be four up here all done with dowel joinery. This took three two by fours at $160 a piece. I don't think two by fours have come down in price yet. How much is that in drug line? Uh, that is two grams of cocaine. You can get different inserts. So this accepts a three eighths inch bit. This is a half inch one, which this would probably be perfect for this scenario. I am not going to use the half inch one because there's this cool option where you can do double row. So I'm gonna stick with the three eighths and do double row, row, double. My wife is a speech therapist, but you would never guess that. I'm going to do double rows of dowels. Double rows of dowels. Double rows of dowels. Double rows of dowels? Now it doesn't, it doesn't even make sense in my brain. Those don't even seem like real words double rolls of So for this one, I'm not even gonna clamp it down. I'm gonna see if I can drill that first hole by holding it. And then put the pin in the hole and drill the other two. Then I can remove my spacer and drill the first three. <laughs> that should be pretty strong. This went really fast, but it would have gone a lot faster if I would have used the half inch drill bit and then didn't have to use the spacer every time. We got to line up 24 pegs with 24 holes. 24 pegs with 24 holes. And I think, I think we got it. I don't even freaking need clamps. That went together pretty fast. I got a whole bunch more of these to make for the budget shop over at the other house for all the wind tools that I purchased. I got a video coming out on all of the wind. I bought all the wind tools. That's gonna be a fun video. But anyway, I got a bunch more of these to make. And instead of doing the six three eighths inch holes, I'm gonna do two one half inch holes. And that's just gonna speed up the process. I, I don't care if you buy this or not. Do I recommend it? Heck. Yes, it, it, it was pretty mind blowing how well it worked in all the different applications. And those times where you gotta take it apart and rearrange the jig and put it back together, I would say those are kind of rare moments. I am not one of those reviewers who just reviews products and everything is roses. I think I've got a good track history of 
saying when things are crap. And would I recommend this? Absolutely. It is a high quality tool. Some of y'all might think it's a little pricey at $200. And I, I think it's a sale price, so that price would probably go up here pretty soon. But it's a high quality tool. It's better than $1,200 for the Festool Domino. Would it replace the Festool Domino for me? I don't think so. The Festool Domino in most applications is gonna be faster and the dust collection on there just it makes for a messless operation. Messless, is that a word? A mess-free operation. So, but I do see myself using the Dalmax in my videos a lot because I want to give my viewers more budget-friendly options. And to be honest with you, I actually would like another Dalmax to keep over at the budget shop. So one here and one over there. So uh, that is gonna wrap it up. Look forward to the Wend video that's coming out. Like we bought all the Wend tools. You guys commented saying, you need to purchase more Wend tools because they're cheap and awesome. We're about to find out how awesome they are. Hold on, hold on one second. I didn't even know that this tool existed. This is made by Grizzly. It drills two holes at the same time for dowel joinery and it works just like the Domino and it's got dust collection. You wanna see a video on this? You wanna see a video on this?